Hello guys and welcome back to Raising Reef. In this new tank build series video I'm going to be building a sump. So I have all the glass here, all prepared, ready to make the sump. I've repurposed some old glass that was given to me by a friend. I thought I might be able to repurpose it and the sump that he threw away was about four foot. And bearing in mind the sump that I'm making is 45 centimetres by 45 centimetres. There was plenty of glass there for me to use. I designed the sump, worked out where I wanted things to go and how I want it to be configured. Many people will design a sump very differently based on their needs or what their priorities are. I decided that I wanted to incorporate quite a large area of this sump for the refugium and I also needed to consider the other pieces of equipment that I wanted to use and where I was going to place them. Taking into consideration the water levels at different, at, at different areas of the sump because certain pieces of equipment desire certain depths of water in order to operate properly. I cut the aquarium glass down using a wet saw that's designed for cutting tiles. Um, it's probably not the best method to use to cut pieces of glass. I've never had much luck with the score and snap technique. This is only like six mil glass, so you could probably score it and snap it. I've never ever been able to do it. Um, every time I try and score and snap a piece of glass, um, invariably it gets about three quarters of the way across and then takes a big chunk out of the piece of glass that I want. So I would never really go near glass as far as that's concerned because I've never had much luck. A friend of mine had made a lot of bits out of glass and told me that he used the same sort of saw as what I have, so I thought I'd give it a go. It does make a little bit of a messy edge, there are a few chips out of the corners, um, even after I've uh, sanded them down. But they will all be covered with silicon, so and it is a sump, not a display tank, so it's not going to be the end of the world. So yeah, I've, I've cut all the pieces up I need to do the base and the sides, and I've also cut all of the sections up to make the baffles. I've never built my own tank before, so this is going to be the first time that I'm doing it. This isn't an instructional video as such because I'm pretty much learning myself as I go. It's more of a just a come along for the ride type of deal. So we're gonna do our best. Um, I understand the principles involved. So we're gonna do our best to make this sump and see how we get on. So let's work out what bits we want where. These lines that I've put on here, if you can see them, indicate where the baffles go and I've put those on the outside so I can just rub those off afterwards with a little bit of acetone but that helps me to uh, line things up and make sure that everything is going to be in the right position. So now we know where each piece goes we can start preparing the tape. The tape I've decided to use is it's called draft drafting tape. Be able to just peel straight off without causing any uh, issue. It's also probably good as a masking tape that won't leave the residue behind. Um, I'm going to use some of this. It seems to stick well to the glass. doesn't seem to uh, leave any residue behind so it seems to be perfect for the job. It's a good idea to raise it up off of the, uh, off of the surface that you want to use because obviously you might want to get underneath it to put some tape around or 
work on the corners and line things up so that way if you can get your fingers underneath I thought it was a good idea to raise it up. The silicon I'm using is HA6 marine grade RTV silicon sealant. Um, I've used this on numerous occasions. I happen to have three tubes of black left over um, that I didn't need for a previous project. Um, like I say, it's a sump, so it's not the end of the world that it's black. Um, it might help to hide some of the scruffy edges. So, what I'm going to do is put a bead of silicon all the way around this. Okay, let's try that again. So that's about it for putting the silicon on. I seem to have got it everywhere. Um, all that's left to do now is to let it cure. Should be ready to come in here and clean it up in about 24 hours. It should have set enough so that I can trim off some of the excess and try and tidy it up a little bit. But hopefully it will do its job and it will function properly. And that's the main thing. It's cost me nothing, so that's a bonus. Um, I didn't really have the money to spend on getting somebody to make me a sump, nor did, I, uh, nor did I think that it was going to be feasible for somebody to visualize exactly what it was that I wanted. So a lot of this planning happened, uh, happened yesterday when I had the equipment at hand to put in position on the cut glass to work out exactly where I wanted the baffles to be. So yeah, getting somebody else to make it would have taken a lot longer because I would have only been at this point ordering the tank and then it would have been a waiting game. So I wanted to get on and get it done. Um, I'd never put a tank together myself before so I thought it was a uh, an interesting little project to get done. Uh, we'll see how it performs once it's cured and I can fill it full of water and maybe put a little pump in it and see how the water flows around in it. But um, yeah, until then, we'll wait for this to cure. So it's been about 24 hours since I assembled the tank. Uh, all of the silicon seems to have cured nicely. I have taken the liberty of going in and trimming up some of the silicon, the, the excess that was uh, causing it to look quite unsightly and messy. It still looks a little bit messy in places where the silicon isn't very tidy, but um, it is a sump at the end of the day, so as long as it's watertight, that's good enough for me. 
And seeing as it's my first attempt at making any type of glass tank, uh, I'm quite pleased with um, how everything's sort of held together. Um, there is a few little edges that are not quite lined up properly, but I don't think it's going to affect the, uh, the structure stability or its integrity at all, so I'm pretty pleased of how it's come out. I have taken the liberty of covering up a few areas that I thought could do with tidying up. There's two reasons for this. I've put some black plastic on two sides of what will be the refugium, um, and that will help to stop any light spilling into the other sections and causing algae to grow. Uh, I've also put a little piece of plastic on the outside of that section because where these two pieces of glass have been sandwiched together, some of the silicon had sort of squidged and it didn't look very attractive, so I've just covered that up just to tidy it up and make it look, look a little bit more professional. Um, so, this first section will be the refugium. Um, that's where I'll be growing macro algae like I do in my remote refugium. If you don't know about refugiums, if you have a look at one of my previous videos, um, I explain a little bit about my refugium in that. Um, but I will do a tank, um, I will do a video in the future dedicated to refugiums and why I like them and what's good about them and do's and don'ts and all the rest of it. But so my refugium's going in here. That will just have macro algae in it. There'll probably be a sand bed in it. There might be a few little bits of live rock in there because this is where the, my reef lobster will probably end up living for the time being. I fitted a removable weir, um, weir comb. Um, it's just a black plastic weir comb that you can remove to clean and then pop back in place. Uh, and that will stop any of the macro algae and that from spilling over into any of the other sections. In this front section, I will have my skimmer and my calcium reactor. I will also have my heaters in there and possibly another reactor for phosphate remover or maybe carbon or biopels, depending on what I'm running at the time, what I decide to run in this tank. It's going to be quite a large refugium for the size of the tank, so I'm hoping I won't need to have quite so much in the way of uh, phosphate remover and biopels and all the rest of it, so we'll see how that goes. After that section, it will spill over through a bubble trap into the last section, which is going to be the return section, which will have the return pump in it, and that will pump the water back up. This section will also have the auto top-up sensor, which will replace the evaporated water into the system as needed. Um, and I'll probably mount my, I've got like a tube holder, which feeds the calcium reactor and my top-up and I think there's a, there's a pH probe in there also that can hang on the side of this and um, that'd be a convenient place to put that. So that's about it, it's all done. Um, I'm looking forward to getting it um, filled up with water and testing it out to make sure it's fully watertight. Uh, I can't do that just yet because I've only added these plastic pieces in with silicon this morning and I need to wait for those to cure properly before I start adding water to it. But once I do, I will test it with the water and then it will be ready to add to the rest of the new equipment that I've got for the new tank build. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope that um, you found it interesting. Uh, if you did, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see the progress of this new setup. and. Until the next video, take it easy.